Well, welcome in, Retriever fans. It's the UMBC Coaches Corner Special Soccer Edition presented by State Fair. It's an amazing restaurant here in Catonsville. Sports and music, if that's your thing, State Fair is where you need to be here in Catonsville. And our special uh, soccer show, and let's set the scene for today here, we're going to talk, and we're going to talk women's soccer first. Um, Vanessa Mann, the women's head soccer coach, is with us, along with freshman standout Lauren Reed, the center back for UMBC. And we'll talk to the, them in just a second. But first, I need to tell you about Oyster Jam, Catonsville's first annual festival hosted by State Fair. It's a, a rain or shine event. It showcases Maryland and regional premier oyster selections. Don't miss out on Maryland's most anticipated spring jam, where your samples, uh, you can eight varieties of oysters for just $2 each, have live music, concerts, uh, craft beer, contests, uh, crush bar, hey, the crush bar, oh yeah, crush bar, uh, it's all right here in the heart of Catonsville. Join us on October the 10th. Uh, tickets available on Eventbrite. Ladies, welcome into the show. Uh, Vanessa, I'll start with you. A great start to the season, 4-2-2 two and two so far. Just talk to me overall about how you feel your team is playing right now. Yeah, it's... Uh we're not surprised, let me tell you that. It's, uh, we've been putting in the work the last few years and bringing in 14 freshmen, it was a large class, but we knew we were gonna have to rely on them. Uh, throughout the recruiting process, we mentioned that if you're good enough, you're old enough, and I think what you've been able to see is we've relied on them heavily this, uh, this fall so far, whether it's between seven, nine, ten of them playing at a time. So, uh, so they've just really transitioned seamlessly for us. Um, so yeah, like I said, we just focus on doing what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do it, and uh, really just pounding the stone every day. All right, so let's, let's break it down because I think for me, the thing that stands out most is your back line. I mean, defensively, you guys are just really good so far through eight games. And I think that's allowed you to let other girls go forward and be more offensive. The one that stands out the most to me, Caroline Kutsos, who is really uh, doing a, a great job up front now offensively. Yeah, it's, like, we're fortunate. We've got, we've got great depth. Um, and I think you're able to see that with uh, whether we've had a few injuries already um, or we've played with all three of our goalkeepers. Um, so uh, it's really a testament to the ladies. They grind out every day, and they just focus on doing what they're supposed to do. Like I said, when they're supposed to do it, and, and pounding the stone, and, and just making sure that when they're called upon, they're ready to perform. So, yeah, do we have a young back line? Absolutely. But we've, we've entrusted in them, and, and we know that they're ready to step up at, at really any opportunity. But our focus right now is just getting ready for Hartford. Let's talk about Lauren for a second, because Lauren has stepped in as your center back. And Lauren, I know uh, re reading your bio, your dad was a hockey player. And, and Coach, you agree? She kind of plays that center back like a hockey player with that physicality yeah. to really take care of things up front in front of the goal. Yeah, Lauren's done a, a fantastic job for us over these last few games. She, she's a, a calm presence back there. She does her job very well. She, uh, that presence, it, it really kind of reverberates around her peers and um, for us, we're, we're thankful that she's here, and um, yeah, she's really just stepped up. So uh, yeah, you got to give her kudos. She's, what, now the Defensive Player of the Week this past yeah, week, yeah. so everyone else is starting to see what, we all, what we've always seen in her. Lauren, welcome to UMBC. Welcome to the show. And I guess talk to me about that mentality of that responsibility of being able to take care of the front of the goal. I mean, yeah, it's a little stressful at times, but... Um, it's fun. I, I like being out there. I like the people that I play with, and that's a big part of it. I trust my teammates a lot. So, Talk about where you got that mentality from. Obviously, I talked to you about your dad, but I guess, yeah. you, know, you know, really, you know, wh where does that come from? I, I don't know, <laughs> you don't know? honestly. <laughs> um, it's funny because my dad was a, one of my coaches when I was younger, mm -hmm. and so I hear it a lot from him even now, just working on small things and – just believe in myself and what I can do. So, how big is that support structure of you know having your dad to kind of lean on like that and, and help you out like that? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, Vanessa, one of the girls next to Lauren is Megan Chun. Megan, and can we talk about her for a second? Because l last year, one of the scariest things I think I've ever seen, uh, the ambulance actually comes onto the field yeah. after she goes down with the injury. 
Uh, we didn't, nobody knew how bad it was, but you know, luckily she recovers and she was able to go for you week one and game one this year. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was a little scary, um, and, and fortunately for us, um, we she was she was good. She it was probably a few weeks of recovery, but yeah, like I said, Megan's in her in her senior year now, and and we've relied on her the last few years, um, so. Having someone like a Megan right next to Lauren can, can kind of steady the ship in some of those moments where it can get a little bit kind of confusing or chaotic. Um, but, uh, yeah, whether it's her back there, you've got Allie Clearfield that's played back there, you've got Annie Grove that's played back there, Clara Looney. I mean, the list goes on. And, again, we're very fortunate with the depth that we have this year. Oh, no doubt. And, you know, we talked about Caroline, uh, but also, you know, Erin Stevenson as well. Her decision to come back. She gives you guys some leadership and senior leadership and graduate student leadership in that midfield. That they're really kind of the, the glue that keeps everybody together, right? Yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting conversation. Erin uh, actually brought it up to me in, uh, in March, and I said, let's have further discussion when the, when the spring season was over. And she, just, she still has the love for the game, and she wants to play beyond. So uh, the track that she's on right now is we're just making sure that we're, we're cleaning up a few things technically and tactically so we can set her up to, to be successful when she leaves here. But, yeah, all the intangibles she brings, the leadership qualities, the, the fact that uh, uh, because we have a significant uh, underclassman class, they can go to her, they can lean on her in the, the tough training sessions or time management. So, yeah, it's been massive. Uh, the 14 freshmen... Uh, the Australian connection. Talk about that. You have a what three? I think three girls or four girls from Australia. Yeah. How, explain that whole recruiting process. I have no idea how they got. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, it's been fantastic. Like I said, I, I, I lean on a lot of the contacts I have at home, um, uh, whether that's family members or it's uh, it, it's friends I have that that are working in the leagues. Um, or within our national setup. Um, so uh, for us, it's just it's finding the right personality that fits with the, the group that we're looking to cultivate here um, and versatility. And, and for us, we, we've hit the jackpot. Um, so that's, yeah, just with those uh, international kids. But the 14 freshmen that we have, the big thing that we were looking for was versatility. Yeah. Let's talk about your goalkeeper situation for a second because Izzy started. It's Izzy not Giro a situation. It's a good situation. It's a good situation. Right. No, exactly. It's a, it's a, you have a great situation. Um, Abby Coles, she's played two spectacular games. And if I could use a hockey term, she stood on her head in your 0-0 tie a couple weeks ago. And then Megan has been the girl that's carried the load, right? Yeah. So uh, what we've got, we've got Izzy back there, we've got Morgan, and we've got uh, Abby. And... All three of them have played. They've they've been able to kind of step in for us when we've needed to, and just been a seamless transition. Um, I think what you what you're able to see is that our backline has the trust with whoever's behind them, and that really starts in our team meetings and in our practices. Lauren, we talked about it. How, talk about your recruiting process and how you ended up from Colorado to UMBC, and, and how that whole thing went. Um, it was a complicated process, uh, stressful, especially when COVID hit. But when I started talking to Ness, I, I knew. Um, she was so supportive about whatever decision I ended up making and my decision. And so I thought UMBC would be my home. And how, do you, how have you liked it so far? I love it here. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> how much different is it, though? Is, like, the culture getting used to coming from Colorado, is it different on the East Coast? It is. It is really different being on the West and then being out here on the East Coast. Um, it's really humid here. Oh, it's it's not, always humid here. Yeah, it's not great, but <laughs> the people are awesome. Everybody's awesome. Hold on, Vanessa, has she eaten crabs yet? I I don't I don't know. Like we were just discussing on the way over here. This was Lauren's first time ever going up to Maine, and I was like, "Yeah, you're close enough to Canada than you are anywhere else right, right now." Right. Right. So no crabs yet? You haven't no. eaten, you haven't eaten no. steamed crabs? <laughs> no, I have not. All right, we need to put that on the list of things that Lauren has to do is eat steamed yeah. crabs, right? Because sure. that's, that's a prerequisite. If you get here and you're, you're here for more than a year, you've got to eat steamed crabs. So <laughs> that's, <right>. that's definite. <laughs> um, talk about your love of the game. Where did you get the, your love for soccer and, and wanted to play the sport? Um, my dad, again. Yeah. Um, he also played soccer before he got into hockey and everything. But I started at a young age, and then I tried every other sport I could, and I just nothing was like soccer. So, What is, what is your favorite thing about it? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> probably the relationships that you build within the team. 
I think I've met some really cool people along the way from when I was younger to now and they've taught me a lot personally and then it just makes me want to go out every day and work hard so Awesome, awesome. Vanessa, before we go, let's talk about your last game. 1-0 win over Maine. Um, you guys got the early goal, and you really did a nice job, especially because of the conditions. I think up there you guys were going against the wind um, in that first half. And we got to talk about Grace Harvey because that's a great finish that she had off, of the, off the chip and put it into the back of the net for you guys to get that win. Yeah, going up to Maine is always tough. Uh, yeah, the the breeze was the breeze was blowing f fairly hot out there, um, but also the, the the size of the field and whatnot. So we knew that going in. So we just had to make sure that we prepared accordingly. And I think for Grace, we were trying to isolate and find pockets of space where she could sit in um, uh, with the rest of our fluid group. And uh, and yeah, like I said. It, we just ask that whenever you get a chance on goal, just make sure you follow, and, and she did it accordingly, and we, we walked out with a win. Uh, great win to start the conference. You're 1-0, and now a big match. I'll be there on Sunday to call the game uh, against Hartford. Talk about the, the Hawks, and, and you know it's never easy in the America East. Yeah, no, John has done a fantastic job over the years there. Um, they're very structured. They're a very technically and, and tactically savvy team. So we have to be ready, and that's what we're working on this past week. Um, so uh, we'll be prepared. Um, and uh, But, yeah, it's mainly just focusing on us and our strengths. Awesome. Vanessa, Lauren, good luck for the rest of the season, and we appreciate you guys coming out here, and we'll be, support, we'll be out there supporting you guys throughout the rest of the conference season. Thanks, Paul. You Thank got you. It. Vanessa Mann, Lauren Reed from the UMBC women's soccer team. And when we come back, we're going to have Coach Karinji from the men's team and one of the, one of the hottest – soccer player in the country right now, Taylor Calhera will join us after the break. Fans, welcome back to the Coach's Corner, our special soccer edition right out here at State Fair again. If you're into sports, if you're into music, State Fair is the place to be here in Catonsville again. Oyster Jam, Catonsville's first annual festival hosted by State Fair coming up in October. Rain or Shine event, it's going to showcase Maryland and regional premier oyster selections. Eight varieties of oysters for just $2 each. Music, contests, craft beers, crush bar. Coach Cringy knows all about the crush bar. And uh, just all a bunch of fun. October 10th, tickets available at Eventbrite. It's time for the men to step in. Head coach Pete Karinji and the hottest player in the country right now, Taylor Calhara with the hat trick, the natural hat trick in the first 25 minutes last night against Lehigh. Taylor, welcome in. Yeah, thank Good. you. Coach, welcome in. Thanks for having us. What is a crush bar? Crush bar. It's, orange, it's crushes. You ever had an orange uh, crush? I don't know what you're talking about. Grapefruit crush? I, I don't know what you're talking Lemon about. Lemon crush? I don't know. They have all kind of crushes. You just go and you pick one up and you just go with it. It's amazing. When Trust the season's me. over, I'll be here. Yeah, it's a, we'll, we'll both come over, all right? Hey, great start to the season. Um, you know, you guys are just on fire right now, Coach. Talk about um, the start and... Not only that, but really dealing with injuries and somehow kind of finding a way to overcome that. Yeah, that's been, uh, I think, the toughest part for us is we have high expectations coming in to the season. Uh, we had a, a great group of young players uh, led by Taylor here, um, you know, coming into the, to the fall based on a great spring. And we had two key injuries, you know, torn knees. Um, and when that happens, it's a setback. And... Obviously, Jordan Ehart's the captain of the team, and Spencer Hanks is a forward, and they both came off of great seasons in the spring. Um, so you're looking forward to having them a cohesive group. So 
and in two key positions. So we went into the season and preseason really trying to see who's going to fill that role, who's going to play, who's, um, you know, and, and clearly I think early on we, we kind of uh, were feeling our way around. But I think we've gotten uh, a lot better in, each, in every practice. Um, the young team is starting to mature. I think we haven't even gotten close to peaking yet. Um, and from an offensive standpoint, I think we can be really good. And I think the stats say that, uh, especially when you got guys like this guy right here. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of feeling your way through things, and, and hopefully we'll get better as we continue to go through. Do you feel like you've kind of locked it down? I mean, you moved Dylan inside. You've kind of moved – you've tried a couple of guys with that right back. You know, I think Kyle – it's kind of stepped into that role now. Yeah. And with Taylor's ability with Ryan Betcher to kind of get that chemistry going and a kid like Tyler Harry, you feel like you've gotten those kind of things straightened out now, right? Yeah, I think you can tell. I mean, the last two games we played really well. Um, and I don't recall coming out and playing the way we played the last two games in quite a while where we just really imposed ourselves on the other team and scored goals and kind of was almost uh, – it was too easy and too good. Um, but, but clearly the names that you mentioned have really kind of helped. And I think once you settle in on that lineup, especially for me, um, I like to have by the time we get into the conference play, the, the rotation, who's coming in, who's coming off the bench. Um, and that's some of the early games that you build that up to. And I think right now, like the chemistry with, Ta with Taylor and uh, <clears throat> Ryan Betcher is, is fantastic. So uh, you, you see that every game. We'll get to Taylor in a second. You know, Ryan Betcher you talked about, but Julian Kanza, from that back line, Taylor, you know, we'll talk to you about this too. Just the ability to play the ball, to overlap, and then get the ball in the box. I mean, that's been huge for you guys. I think statistically today we found out that he's the leading uh, assist player in the country with six assists. So that says a lot from coming from the left back. Um, he's phenomenal with his serves. He's really uh, worked on his game. And as a captain, I think he came back really fit and and he's shown leadership on the field. So it's great to have a player like that coming down the left side and, and serving balls. And now the guys are reading him. I think that's the key to knowing where he's going to play a ball right. and be at the right place at the right time. All right, let's bring Taylor in here for a second. Taylor, welcome into the show. Welcome to UMBC for your sophomore season. Um, tell us, first of all, six goals in three games. Hat trick last night. Uh, talk about being in the zone and what that's like and kind of what you're seeing out there uh, with such success. Uh, I think uh, just in the start of the season, uh, especially in the spring, I didn't uh, have like the most goal scoring and I was kind of struggling a little bit. But uh, with our team bringing together and coming together and just playing the way that we've been playing, it's just allowed us to focus and uh, we obviously want to win a ring. And so just the focus of winning every game and scoring goals is just important. So I think just getting into the thick of things and just getting into it just helped a lot. I mean, I'll tell her it was obvious watching you in the spring and some of the things you were doing, your skill set, that you had a chance to be a, a great player. But I think when you look at this fall and the, just the chemistry, I think, is the biggest difference. You know, talk about – because you scored a goal every way imaginable last night. You got a through ball where you beat the defense and scored. You were in a position in the box to make a play on the corner. And then you were there for the header as well. So just talk about all the ways that you have to be available to score goals. Yeah, I think it just uh, – goes with training and realizing uh, who likes to do what. Like uh, Julian is great at crossing and you know where he wants to put the ball as coach is always telling us in practice and just getting the feel of Ryan Betcher and building our relationship and, and then just knowing the ball is just a, a skill set to have and just that scoring in instinct to just put the ball in the goal and put the other teams away. All right, let's talk about training for a second. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Taylor's dad is Neto, who is a great player for the Baltimore Blast. Coached at Concordia for you in high school and is a great soccer player. Um, from what I understand, you trained with a lot of Brazilian players, uh, top of the uh, elite players in the offseason, which how does that help you coming into UMBC? Because we know in this conference, sometimes you're going up against European players that are 25, 26 years old. So that had to help you, right, to understand what's coming in the season. Yeah, for sure. Um, the guys that I've trained with are, are very good and very skillful, and they push me every day. Um, and... Yeah, at, the, at the end of the day, you just got to train with the best uh, to be the best. And you just got to push yourself as hard as you can. And so that way, when you come into the season, you're fit, you're ready, and uh, you can just take it to a different level. Talk to me about your dad and, and him coaching you and him being there. I, I, see, I see him in every game. Um, is it a, kind of a double-edged sword of it's great to have him, 
But what are the expectations when your dad is one of the best soccer players to play in Baltimore? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've watched him ever since I was since I was born, just going to blast games. And uh, so I'm just, you know, trying to be like him every day, um, you know, bring my own legacy at the same time. But uh, I just love his support, and I couldn't ask for anything else. Uh, he's trained me very hard, and that's why I'm here today and who I am. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm trying to kick his butt and, you know, <laughs> be better. So <laughs> I, I just want to let you know, like, we, we walked out together um, at the, after the Mount St. Mary's game. And you scored both goals. And he was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know it's, got, it's, it's a tough crowd, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. It is. All right. Yeah. Um, coach, you know, talk about, you know, the potential, obviously, right? But you still have to finish. And, you know, we, you, I know you've been kind of disappointed, and we talked about this before the show. You guys have gotten up 3 nothing, two straight games, and then kind of kicked the ball around and not really finished the deal. But how often are you ahead 3-0, and, and how hard is it to play in that style when you're ahead that much? Well, it is difficult when you get ahead 3-0 because you naturally have a tendency to kind of let down a little bit. And I, I think one of the things that we've been really talking about and trying to preach um, was just to have the killer instinct, you know, to go into the game with the mentality that you're going to play the whole 90 minutes because – um, both games, you know, we went out, we were up three to nothing. We dominated early in the game, took control of the game. But both games are very similar. We kind of let down a little bit, let the other team come back and play. And that can be very scary because later on you play against better competition and you're not always going to be up three to nothing. Um, and you got to play a complete game. I've never seen a team that's uh, very not very successful that doesn't play the whole game. So we're getting away with not playing a 90-minute game yet. Um, but if you look at the Maryland game, it was the opposite. We let them get ahead, and then we kind of a big flurry at the end to, to make it 4-3 to three and, and obviously could have tied it. But I, I've been stressing, and that's un, until I get it, that we're going to play that complete game. Coach, we talked about injuries earlier, but we got to mention, you know, Quantrell Jones dealing with the injury. Uh, you know, Jalen Gillespie has stepped up, and two clean sheets, uh, made some spectacular saves against Lehigh last night and has played really well for you guys. Yeah, and he really uh, he was phenomenal last night and uh, we're just we're very uh, blessed to have three good goalkeepers and you know when Quantrill went down, he's a, a great teammate and he's the first one out there pushing and talking to Jay and helping him um, but but clearly I think, you know, Jalen last night made his, his his mark on college soccer by his performance. And we have to talk about Quantrill because what you told me before the show, you guys were down, obviously Baltimore trying to get the World Cup. And Quantrell made a, a speech to the committee, and you said he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and I was I was tremendously impressed with uh, Quantrell. You know, I, I, obviously I was on the committee uh, when we had the World Cup last time it came here, and I was I, I was invited along with Quantrell to come in the presentation to try to get the World Cup here to Baltimore. So we were on top of the World Trade Center, and uh, you know I'm sure he was a little nervous because he had to speak to the FIFA committee, and. Uh, you know, didn't have a speech written or nothing, but he went up there and, and, and gave like a four-minute speech, and he was fantastic, and I was extremely proud of how he handled himself, and they were very, extremely impressed. So um, if we do, if we're fortunate enough to get the World Cup to come here, I think Quantrell might get a... He gets we, the we assist, get, he gets we, the assist, right? He gets the assist, and we might have to get him a pass to go to a game. All right, before we go, we have to talk about the 1991 team that was honored all <laughs> the other night. Your first year to your 31st year now. Well, you know, Jason Dieter was on the broadcast for about 10 minutes uh, telling stories about 1991. What do you, what do you remember from those guys? Um, well, I remember, I always say, the first game. You know, I, I arrived at UMBC coming from the Maryland Bays, who ironically, today's the anniversary of our national championship. And um, I, I arrived coming from sold-out stadium and press conferences to – a crowd, it was like 13 people at UMBC <laughs> Stadium, and 10 of them were my family. And we were losing one to nothing to Shepard, and I was cussing at myself, saying, what am I doing here? And, uh, but that, that group was, the, I think, they're one of the, the springboards and the foundation of the success that we've had throughout the years. It was a very tight-knit group. We won 15 games. We broke records. Yeah. We won big games against teams where UMBC never won bef beat before. And uh, they set the foundation because they're the guys that come back and support us and great stories. And the other day, I, I, they wanted me. They kept calling me to come over where they're at. And uh, I had to go over and, <laughs> you take care and, of, right? and see yeah. some of the guys. And obviously, some, we all looked a little bit different. But it's great to get back and, 
And I think that's the beauty of the game, you know, that years later, and that's when I preach to these guys, years later um, that you come back and you talk about your championships and, and the stories get better and better. Two things stood out from Jason. One, he had to, he, Dr. Brown told him he had to beg his instructors to come back to school to be able to play, right? <laughs> yep, yep. And the second one was the gauntlet where he, he alleges he tackled you on the field, but he was the only one that could get away with that at that time. At that time, he could. Yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff, Coach. Big game uh, at UMass Lowell on Saturday. And then next home game, be out there next Tuesday against Delaware. I'll have the broadcast, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get another victory. Coach, thank you. Taylor, stay hot. And uh, we'll see you guys down the road. Yes? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, that's going to do it for the show. Again, thanks to State Fair. Great, great restaurant here in Catonsville. If you're out here in Catonsville, sports, music, be here at State Fair. And don't forget about Oyster Jam as well. Coming up October the 10th, tickets available on Eventbrite. For Coach Vanessa Mann and Lauren Reed and for Coach Karinji and Taylor Calhara, I'm Paul Mindermeyer saying so long. You've been watching this special edition of the Coach's Corner here on UMBC's YouTube channel.